we're gonna call our uh, game data service from the game, from actually uh, Unity C Sharp. Uh, but before we start, I'd like to get a little bit of feedback from you guys uh, to see how um, uh, this series is going for you. So um, if you could leave a comment saying like uh, if uh, you think the this content is maybe too heavy or maybe it's not going in, in depth enough for you, um, I'd like to know because I'm trying to shape this series so that you guys can follow along and that um, you actually learn um, uh, in a fun way to uh, do these things. So yeah, um, if you also uh, need help uh, with this video, we always have the Discord channel that you can join and ask for help. The link is in the um, YouTube channel banner. Okay, so if you're ready, let's get started. All right, so let's start preparing our um, Unity project to call that game service we did. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and create a class. Um, we're gonna go in, uh, let's put it in games, and we're gonna go here, create a class that's gonna be called, in fact, let's put it in the folder. So, uh, folder and uh, game services. Here we go, we got our game services right here. Um, uh, do I put it into, no, I don't think I'm gonna put it into games, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. So in here, we're gonna create a new class, which is gonna go, be called player service player service there we go so our player service is going to be the one uh, responsible to call our um yeah, our python uh data server that we did um so for that uh, we're going to need another thing which is um uh, data so we're going to go in here uh and we're going to say a directory uh, in fact i'm going to use i'm going to use the game uh, for now and we're gonna do a directory here, model. In a model, we're gonna create a player. We're gonna move these things around because I'm not really sure yet um, which structure I'm gonna use. And that player is gonna be used for um, whenever, so whenever you call the uh, server, the server responds to you in JSON, but that JSON needs to actually be transformed back into an object that um, your Unity game can um, use. So that player represent that JSON. So what we're gonna receive from the server here is a, a string. Uh, we're gonna say public string uh, gamer tag. There we go. So this needs to be named the same way you would name this here. Um, so here it's, uh, let's put it with a capital letter so that whenever um, it's received from the uh, from the game, it's gonna be able to map this to our um, our value here, the value, the name of the our variable. So our player service is gonna call, so we're gonna create a method, uh, public, uh, we're going to make it um, async for sure. So we're going to go uh, public. Let's put it static also. So public static async. And then we're going to do task player. So this is going to be, it's going to return a player. Uh, and we're going to say get player. Usually you would uh, send an ID or something. And since I just want to show you um, what it would like, we're going to say ID, uh, ID here. Uh, let's go ID. So that um, you can just get, get, uh, get a sense of how you can pass data to your server and then receive uh, some data back. Um, so yeah, uh, what we're going to do is uh, here, we're going to define a constant. So it's going to be a static private string base URL, oops, URL equals, and this is the URL that um, our HTTP call needs to uh, call uh, to get uh, to our server. So um, when we, when you go into um, Visual Studio and actually uh, start your app, it says running on this address. So this is exactly what we're going to do. We can even copy paste this. So back in writer and put it right here. So this is actually actually what the server is going to call. So let's go in like this. And then what we need to do is put in the path that we're going to call. And after that, um, uh, for us, it's going to be static private string um, uh, get player. So get uh, player. 
In fact, I think I should put this one also as a base URL because it's a constant. So let's try to put that. Uh, that's how you would you would um, write a constant. This is just so that when you read the code, you just know clearly this is a constant. Um, so this is in fact your base URL plus um, a path. So for us, it's going to be player, and then we're going to need an ID. So we're going to put zero here, and this is uh, just so that we can replace this by the actual ID that was passed in here. Um, so yeah, so for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to assume the call is made. So we're going to do a um, server request, which is going to be a class that we did, uh, we're do we're going to do, um, uh, soon get request. Um, cause it's, uh, if you remember from the last video, I talked about a little bit about the verbs, uh, the HTTP verbs. So this is a get, cause we're just trying to retrieve some information and then we can do string dot format. Uh, get player and pass in our ID. Okay, so then we're going to assume that this is uh, doing their thing and it's returning you a response. The response that it's going to return you is the actual uh, JSON. So what we're going to do then we can do player player equals JSON utility dot from JSON and then here we say which class it's supposed to be, or it should parse it into. And then we put the response. And then we return the player. The player. Okay, so this is going to be like the basic, basic thing of um, how we actually call uh, our server. So this is linking a server request to an actual game model. Uh, so this is a pattern we're going to use a lot whenever we want to interact with our data server. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and just do that um, server request class. Now in the game services, let's uh, create that class. Though. So server request. There it is. So um, in our server request, we're going to need that public static um, async. Uh, the task is going to be to, re uh, whoops, what am I doing here? Uh, task, and then it's going to return a string, which is going to be the JSON. Uh, let's import that. So it import uh, system threading tasks, uh, and it's uh, get request, and it take an actual string URL to call. Here we go. So um, there you go. So for service, it's a uh, fine. So in here, um, Unity has a utility that you can call, that you can use to actually make um, um, HTTP requests. So we're going to do using Unity um, Unity Web Request Request equal Unity uh, Oops uh, Unity uh, Web Request dot get. So there it is, and you just uh, pass him the URL and what you're going to do here is you're going to get that request object and we want to await the response for this. So we're going to do a wait request and send when request. So you actually send and we await for the result. And we're going to say if request um, that is a network error, oh, which is deprecated, uh, it's deprecated. We're supposed to do Unity Web Request uh, Result. Okay, so request is it result like this? Yeah, result uh, connection error. Okay, no, we learn every day. So if there is a connection um, error, meaning like our service, they, they, we were not able to kind of. Um, uh, we need to import the await apparently, which is in the Unity engine. Didn't know that. Um, so the connection error means like our game was not able to reach the backend service. So um, our data uh, server. So if that happens, we're just going to debug log uh, an error. So we're just going to say like, uh, in fact, let's go in log error, log error. And we're going to say could not connect to backend services. Here we go. And we return null. 
Otherwise, if everything went well, we're just going to do uh, return request dot down down oops download handler dot text. So this is going to give us uh, the JSON we need. And um, after that, in the player service, once we have that JSON, we're going to parse it to our player class and then return the player. OK, so now we're ready to use that player services to get information from a server. OK, so now let's go into our um, client class, which is our client network manager. And let's say that before we start the client, to we start actually um, uh, connecting to the dedicated server, we're going to ask a backend for our information. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this to be in a sync method. And we're going to do await player services that get player. And then we're going to pass an ID for us. Um, uh, let's pass uh, just a steam ID, which an ID is going to not be coming for us anyway, f from us anyway, it's going to be coming from steam. So steam is going to give us information. At some point, we're going to authenticate the um, user with the server, uh, with steam and everything. So that um, steam is going to be actually the one telling us who that player is. So the way steam work is whenever you start, you get an attend, you can get a notification, uh, uh, an authentication ticket, sorry. Um, and that authentication ticket, you can send it to a backend and the backend is gonna be able to, um, that game data server is gonna be able to uh, call Steam and say, hey, can I have the information for the person who has that uh, ticket? So yeah, uh, but for now, we're just, uh, I just wanna really show you how the full loop is actually working. So how everything is kind of um, talking with each other. So yeah. So with that, we should be able to retrieve a player from that. Player, player, like this. So let's go ahead and import the um, game models. And here we're going to do a debug.log. Uh, let's go like this. So we can insert his name. Player retrieved. And we're going to do this. I'm going to say uh, player dot gamer tag. OK, so uh, retrieved, retrieved. And uh, with that, we should be able to see the gamer tag. But we're going to need to go back and start our server and uh, we'll test this. In fact, before we um, uh, can uh, test it in Unity, what we're going to need to do is uh, we need to actually modify that route. So uh, we need to actually tell the, uh, our uh, backend that uh, you should expect the parameter here. So we're going to go here, but we're going to say um, it's since it's a get, you pass the parameter in the actual URL. So what we're going to say in the path here, we're going to say it's a string and um, oops, and you can expect it to be called. Uh, you can store it, in fact, in a steam ID. So we're going to go steam underscore oops, uh, underscore ID here. Um, and here, then we have that variable. So we can say if steam ID equals steam ID, then you return me this. Uh, but if it's not, then uh, let's put just one more space here. Return me uh, an empty object. Okay. So um, let's just. In fact, we're doing it like this. Um, so that means like we didn't, uh, we weren't able to actually retrieve the user information. So now that we have that endpoint uh, working, what we're going to do is we can go into here, run the debug and start our application. So um, you're going to see it. It's starting. Uh, the bar here is orange. We know that the um, game services are running. So now we can go back uh, directly in Unity and uh, test this. So let's go here. Uh, what we have here is um, our game. Uh, we have this T manager here, the init that's going to instantiate our client G, uh, game object, uh, which has a client network manager, which is going to call our backend to get the player um, if we have the right ID. So here we go. And here it is. I have it. So play retrieve uh, Dev, which was the one we had right here um, and we can test this by saying uh, let's put a couple s's here let's save it should automatically reload and if i go back to unity 
I stop and start my game, I should immediately see uh, that uh, new username. So uh, that the cool thing with that is that now that information doesn't leave is not stored in the game so that means i can reuse it somewhere else so let's say at some point i wanted to do a website for the player that the player can go and modify um customize his character when he's not uh, at home and he's just like on the on the move he has a nap or he has a um, a website that he can go to and customize a character that information can be stored in that game services that game data services and then our game can just retrieve it so um uh, the backend services are really for um um to, to, to store the data so that you can use it across multiple mediums. So you can use it for your game, you can use it for a website, you can use it for an app, um, or you can use it also across games. So if at some point you do a sequel and you want to um, kind of players to still be able to use some um, some some things from your previous game, then you, the game data services is going to be able to do that. And there it is for our uh, video calling our game data services. Um, I hope this uh, helps you kind of understand the full loop of how games interact with Steam, but also with a backend uh, game data service um, to kind of uh, provide you with all the uh, feature in a game. Um, so if you like the video, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.